Let's bring in the president's attorney now, Jay Seculo. Mr. Seculo, thanks for joining us again this morning. You know, the president's hey, team on several occasions denied any contacts with the Russians during the campaign. The president said he had nothing to do with Russia. But from this plea agreement yesterday, we know that Russians reached out to Papadopoulos because he was a campaign advisor. They discussed these thousands of emails and dirt on Hillary Clinton. The Papadopoulos remained in regular contact with Russians and also with top campaign officials. So is the president prepared now to retract those denials of any contact? No, the, no, here's what you have. I mean, you've got to look at the context when you, you, you mentioned, George, uh, the document, the charging document, and in it, it says in paragraph 21, section C, the trips, this all led up to this purported trip that was going to take place between uh, Russian officials and uh, Trump campaign officials. And what does it say? This is the government's document. The trip proposed by defendant Papadopoulos did not take place. Yeah, but that document so also the, says, what you hold, have on, here hold on right there. Ahead. That document also says that, the, that he was encouraged to take that trip by a top campaign official, Sam Clovis, who is now a White House advisor. So he was encouraged to take that trip, even though it doesn't happen. And it details months of contacts with the Russians before that and months of contacts with high campaign officials. Yeah, and, and again, that, the charge of what was a violation of the law here was not proposed meetings with an individual, a professor that was uh, Russian based. I think they met initially in London. The charge of what got George Papadopoulos in trouble was that he lied to the FBI about agents regarding the timing the of Russians. when he said these took place. About his yeah. contacts yeah, with no the Russians. No question. That's what, yes, that's what's in the charging document, George. So that was part of the plea agreement. But the position that the administration has advocated and the position that it continues to advocate, and I think, by the way, uh, as it continues to advocate this, you look at the Manafort police, no mention of anything to do with the campaign there uh, in, their, in their charging document, the indictment. With regard to Papadopoulos, he was, as Sarah Sanders said yesterday, he was a, he was a volunteer with the campaign, served on one of the committees. The, you've been involved in campaigns. There are a lot of these committees. He, he was it, it evidently, according to the documents that the government has filed, he was in contact with individuals that purported to be somehow involved with Russia or Russian government. It's not clear from the documents what they actually were. The end result is the meeting doesn't take place. Well, so when you had it, you just had all this conversation about collusion. Remember this, collusion in and of itself, there's no crime of collusion. What is a violation of the law here? I go back to that. For George Papadopoulos, the violation of the law, George, was clearly, that he lied to FBI agents, which is clearly not condoned by the administration. Collusion is cooperation, and that's what he was doing with Russians. But we, I want to get back to that meeting that he actually had with President Trump. I want to put that picture back up again, yeah. March 31st of 2016. Sure. According to the document, he said at that meeting with President Trump that he could set up a meeting with Mr. Putin. What was Mr. Trump's reaction to that? I don't know. I, w I wasn't there, and I have not talked to the president about that, so I, I don't know. I do know this. The meeting that was being proposed did not take place, uh, and that's clear in the government's submission that they filed uh, in the federal court. You spoke to Mr. Trump yesterday, correct? Yes. What was his reaction to these indictments in this plea agreement? Well, let, let me say a couple things on that. First of all, I, I'm not going to give you, the, my, obviously, my conversations with the president of the United States, their, their attorney-client privilege, but I will tell you this. Uh, it, was, it was a... I gave him, as, the, as we do as lawyers, a kind of an analysis of what we had seen that morning with regard to uh, the, the in public documents. All I'm giving you is what we, we saw, which was the public documents, which was the indictment of uh, Paul Manafort and uh, Richard Gates. We discussed that with him. That was it. There's a story that's been posted, I think, on, on uh, one of the other networks that says there was this meeting with all of the lawyers in the residence for hours. And that, I just want to say that uh, that's not true. Uh, <laughs> that did not take place. Uh, we had a conversation with the president, discussed what the charges looked like they were, and that was it. I'm not, I obviously won't discuss any more, anything else that would be related to well, attorney let me client ask you information, something else then, that was the nature of the discussion. Let me ask you something else then. You know, the president's campaign sure. chair and his deputy charged with laundering millions of dollars, $75 million yeah. in the document. So given that, does he regret hiring Paul Manafort? Well, remember this. Paul Manafort was brought into the campaign. Uh, for a period of time. He was the campaign chairman. His primary focus was the delegate issue. And, and don't forget, George, he was ultimately terminated uh, by the president, by the, uh, then the, the nominee, uh, because of the discussions that started coming up with regard to the Ukraine that started becoming uh, uh, information that was a distraction to the campaign. And the administration, uh, then it was an administration, then the campaign took action and removed him as the chairman. So it wasn't as if this went on and when information became available, nothing was done. It was. The president terminated two, two, uh, Paul Manafort's position. Two yeah. final questions. Has the can you say definitively yeah. that the president has ruled out firing Robert Mueller? 
Let me say this, and I have said this. There is no conversation regarding firing Robert Mueller, and there's no basis to fire Robert Are Mueller you ruling on anything out? that we've seen. So I'm, I will say this. The president has not indicated to, to me or to anyone else that I work with that he has any intent on terminating Robert Mueller. And the way it would work is you could only terminate some, a special counsel for cause, and we, uh, we just don't see any basis for cause. So no intent, so they're not ruling it. it out. How about pardons? Is he ruling that out? I have not had a conversation with the president regarding pardons, and pardons are not on the table. Jay Sekulow, thanks very much for your time this morning. Th thanks, George.